there it is. All right. I used this when um, when we were talking about the eternal rewards of self-mastery, I believe, is when I use the scripture. But um, God gave me the scripture again for tonight. We may just keep coming back to it because it's just... It's one that God's drilling in to my mind right now. And so as far as I know, we'll use it again next week. But in um, 1 Peter chapter 4, and verse 7, it says, King James, But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Reading from the New Living Translation. Since we are approaching the end of all things, be intentional, purposeful, and self-controlled so that you can be given to prayer. The world into which that Jesus was born was um, a very compassionless Cold place. Um, it it was a time of such extreme poverty that was that was the norm, and people were just scraping by, and they were they were striving to live, and that that kept the um, that kept the focus of people on their own needs their own family, their own survival. It was all about how are we going to survive today so that we can be here tomorrow to be concerned about how are we going to survive tomorrow. I could go into all of the things about the Roman oppression, about the taxes and all of this kind of thing. I'm not going to. I'm just going to I'm just talking about the fact that it was not a world where that the word compassion was even bandied about as we have known it to be bandied about in our lifetime, kind of thrown out there for whenever it's convenient. But um, suddenly here is a man who begins to teach by both words and actions a whole new way of thinking and a whole new way of conducting life. The Apostle Paul expressed it in um, Philippians 2 and 4. He was expressing this way of life that Jesus was portraying by um, saying, each and every one of you, you, you should look not only on your own things, but look also on the things of others. And this is, this is the life that Jesus was portraying. This, this is what he came. It, it went counterculture to everything. It was a concept that amazed them, baffled them. But yet he was he was here, and with this um, revolutionary message, he was letting it be known that the ruling attitude and behavior of his kingdom and the kingdom of those who would be born again was to be compassionate demonstrative love in action and that it was to provide a caring concern for others and as I have already said he didn't just leave it to words but he modeled it through um, his lifestyle for us he spelled it out for us in um, what we call the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, that love was the law of this kingdom. Yeah, right. okay. um, this is a kingdom that is accessed by faith. Yeah, right. Amen. The kingdom, we 
which is accessed by faith is ruled by the law of love. Romans um, at 13 and um, at verses 9 through 10, they kind of like list out the um, at 10 commandments there. And they tell us that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. But then it goes so far as to tell us that love is what actually fulfills the Ten Commandments. So if we want to actually fulfill and live out the Ten Commandments, it is going to be operational through love. What is a tool that love uses to express itself? Compassion. So Jesus, while that he was um, he was sinless, he was very aware of sin, and he was very acutely conscious of its effects on humanity. Jesus was moved by sinful people who were suffering. Because they were suffering from inherited consequences that had been passed down to them through um, depravity, through personal sins. And so we can we can look and I know I'm giving you a lot of scripture references without actually going and reading them. But we're, we're going a long way in a short amount of time. Right. So if you're taking notes, you will, you'll get those. But we, we can read in Matthew chapter 9 and 13 and in chapter 12 and verse 7. Where that in referring back to the scripture that is actually in Hosea 6 and 6. Jesus is explaining this break with societal norms and religious traditions. One version of Hosea 6 and 6 reads it like reads like this. It says, For I want not animal sacrifices, but mercy. I want not burnt offering. I want people to know me as God. And that is basically what um, Matthew 9 and Matthew 12, they just are a repeat of, um, of that scripture. What is this? This is a clarification that Jesus was giving about why that he was demonstrating a lifestyle that was totally unfamiliar, okay. that was baffling, yeah. Yeah. and that had not previously ever been a norm for mankind. Because the fact that Jesus was leading by example, he was very intentional in his compassion. Really, Calvin should be on that if you, we just have been just doing the church one. And I think that you don't have him on there. And um, he asked to be. If you just put it on the church one, then um, it'll be good. Um, he knew that it was compassion for mankind, which is all wrapped up in love. That had caused him yeah. to leave the heavens above and to come and to walk among us on earth. All right. Okay. And he knew that it was the very story of love and compassion, which would be the salvation of mankind. Right. Yeah. And he knew that when his spirit would fill the souls of humanity, that that same love and compassion would have to flow out from those who had been filled if that they were going
demonstrate yes. his yes. spirit. Yes. And that it would be demonstrated through both the fruit and the gifts of the spirit. Yes. Yes. And so from his life, which was actually lived before us, we understand that we as spirit-filled believers must also be very intentional yes. in our compassion. Amen. Jesus Christ was motivated by one thing, compassion. Yes. Yes. He set out with intention to see people in the whole of their needs as individuals. Yes. He looked at them and he saw them as individuals made in the image yes. of God. Yes. He did not break them down into categories as society did. Wow. Wow. Amen. Jesus did not see male and female. Right. He did not see Jew and Gentile. Right. He did not see aliens and citizens. He did not see adults and children, right. but rather he intentionally viewed each and every individual as a member of the created human uh -huh. yeah. family yeah. and a potential yeah. member yeah. of his spiritual family. Amen. All right. Amen. And through that view, he intentionally Intentionally poured out yes. compassion yes. with no respect of persons. Amen. Jesus was intentional in showing compassion toward children. He welcomed them. He recognized their needs. Some were hungry and malnourished when they came to him. Some had common ailments and sicknesses. Some were deformed and blind. Others were in the grip of demonic powers, as we read in Mark chapter 9 and verses 17 through 18, when the father brought his son who was um, plagued by a mute spirit and that spirit would take him and throw him and, and do um, all manner of things to him. But if you remember, the children annoyed Jesus' disciples. Right. Yes. 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 Why? Because there was important stuff happening and they were far too busy to have the imposition of children being children and disrupting the important things that were happening. Come on now. Okay. Right. And for anyone who wants to know, that was written last Saturday. <laughs> Absolutely everything 
and poured out love right. on them. He prayed for them. He blessed them. And in um, in Mark 10, 13 through 16, he he didn't just stop there. He didn't just he didn't stop with just, you know, embracing them, blessing them, and then sending them on their way. But he went so far as to use them as an example and a model yes. to everyone else right. who, um, who would follow. He, he used um, their dependency, their trust, their teachable spirit, their innocence to serve as models for the rest of us about what is needed to enter into the kingdom of God. All right. All right. He didn't use them as a model because they're perfect. He didn't use them as a model because that um, they're so well behaved. Okay. He used them as a model because of their trust. That is the leading, the leading thing out, out of all of these things that I have listed. All right. That we, we need to look and we need to have that kind of a dependency. We need to have that kind of a trust. Yeah. We need to have that kind of a teachable spirit. Right. Yeah. Children are not always well behaved and perfect. But if you teach them the right way to behave, they are teachable. And they will accept that. And we need that as adults to have that childlike spirit. Because you see what God is doing right now is just what Pastor got up here and talked to us about expansion and growth how many buildings in town are we going to need where are we going to spread out to how are we going to um how are we going to give birth to a church that's already that god said i gave the dream and i have conceived it yes all right mm -hmm. yes what is god doing right now god is taking this church and he is telling us you must grow up in me. Right. You, you've got to get your roots deep. Right. But it's more than you, you've had so much of the word of God that you ought to be coming up now then as a plant. And you ought to be bearing fruit. And this fruit ought to be able to be used when we separate out all over the community, when we go to these other communities right. that God is calling us to. Right. Right. All right. Because why? Mm -hmm. Because in these few months mm -hmm. of 2022, we looked and we said, I want to have a childlike spirit. I want to act like an adult in Jesus with a childlike spirit. I want to be able to trust like I've never trusted before. I want to know that if I will just fall back on him and I will be dependent on him instead of trying to fix it and do it and make it happen and control it if I'll just fall back in the arms of Jesus and let him embrace me and lean on him in dependence then he is going to find everything out that I need our trust and we need to have a teachable spirit right now for what it is that he is actually trying 
to teach us. All right. The um, another area where that um, that Jesus showed great compassion was that um, he he showed great compassion for women. We um, we understand that during this time when that Jesus was um, was walking on the earth, it was a it was a very um, patriotic society. Yeah, I don't mean patriotic. Say it again. Patriarchal. I'll say it in our language. It was a male-dominated society. <laughs> Ten required for a service, 
But if that um, there were nine men and one female, that didn't qualify. Mm. And the men, they did all the worship. They said all the prayers while that the ladies sat in adjoining areas. Wow. I just, I am, I'm glad that Amen. Jesus came. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But you see, because Jesus was sensitive to the needs of all people, yes. right. whether yeah. male or female, yeah. Yeah. and he exhibited a compassion that was all inclusive. So it, what Jesus came along and what Jesus did was very intentional. Sure. He was intentionally breaking through traditional gender restrictions and taboos. Sure. Yes. For, you know, the general um, the general populace of people. So think about this. I gave you that little bit of rough background there for a second because I want you to think about this. Jesus allowed a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years to touch him in order to heal her. He didn't react with a shudder. He, um, he didn't go follow some prescribed routine for cleansing. Right. He didn't condemn her right. for a male contaminating act. Okay. Yeah. But instead, Jesus just gently led her to understand yes. Yes. the difference yes. between right. some kind of a belief and some kind of a, a magical um, contact and an actual saving faith that was demonstrated through divine grace. So what did intentional compassion do? Intentional compassion said, this is the way that it's been, but now I Jesus right. I'm stepping on the scene right. and I will be intentional in all that I do because of my compassion yes. Amen. his compassion led him to be intentional right. there, um, there was another woman who history says was a prostitute who approached Jesus while he was eating in a Pharisee's house. And she poured precious ointment on his feet. And she washed them with her tears and with her hair. Again, she touched him. And compassionately, Jesus understood and yes, knew yes. her repentance and her faith. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so his compassion moved him to with great intent to defend her actions. Amen. All right. All right. He yeah. sent her away giving her a blessing of peace. Again, no condemnation. Right. No running her in the ground. All right. No humiliating her right. and embarrassing her or calling her out. But instead, he allowed her story to be put All right. in his word to us. So that we can still be talking about the day that Jesus was so moved with compassion that he allowed a woman to touch him and to wash her feet with his tears and dry them with her hair. Yes. 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 Y
so very um just so very moving against what um what god will do with his compassion and i hope that we're thinking about where are we in all of this again jesus if um if that you want to go and you want to talk about the fact that he displayed compassion toward women and toward those who were um, marginalized by their by their own sin, then let's talk about um, the fact that he refused to engage in the stoning of the adulteress who had been caught in the very act. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when Jesus showed up. He was so filled with compassion, born out of the fact that these were people who were so caught up in sin and in a sinful lifestyle because of the generations and generations and generations of sin just being passed down and passed down and passed down. And um, he knew that he was here walking among humankind because he had been moved with compassion for the sin that he wanted to set them free. And so in this moment, it was compassion on the inside that caused him to act intentionally. All right. All right. Yes. Okay. And he intentionally then, basically, he employed tact and tactfulness right. in the situation. Mm -hmm. That is how compassion was demonstrated through right. Jesus. Yeah. Right. And this situation yeah. was by employing tact yes. and being tactful. Yeah. So he handled the whole situation righteously, uh -huh. but yet Forgivingly. Yeah, right. He absolves the woman of her guilt. He warned her against further involving herself in future temptation of that same sort. And then he just sent her away to live a changed life. All right. Because that's what compassion with intent does. Wow. Intentional compassion brings about a life change yeah, right. for the one who is touched by compassion. Yeah, all right. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we see that um, we see the fact that Jesus never did condone sin, not in the least, but yet. He offered pardon and he offered hope to anyone that society had pushed aside as if that they were just garbage or trash. One more story that I want that I want you to look at is um, the fact that widows were not weren't treated really really well during those times. They had to have some family to um, take care of them because they were totally dependent on the male to be able to um, to be able to support them. So um, widows also were recipients of Jesus's compassionate help, and the Old Testament gave instructions about um, how that they were to be cared for. But I want to give you the example of Jesus' attitude. Do you remember when 
that he was um, walking along and he encountered a funeral procession outside the city of Maine. A young man had died. He was the only child of his grief-stricken mother. So now here she was gonna face a life of um, loneliness and in all probability, absolute destitution. But when Jesus saw that funeral procession and he heard the mother sobbing, Luke chapter seven and verse 13 says, his heart went out to her. He didn't, he didn't wait for any appeal. She shouldn't make any appeal to him. He was, his heart went out to her. He was touched with compassion. Amen. All right. I often think about that and I wonder, was he in that moment thinking about his own death and about how his own mother was maybe going to feel? Did that help to stir up the compassion in this moment? For, um, for this um, widowed mother. And so, compassion caused him to act intentionally. And he stopped the funeral procession and reached out. And again, he reached out. He touched the coffin. Yes, yes. He risked again a ritual contamination. Oh, All right. yes, yes. And he commanded the corpse to rise. Uh -huh. And miraculously, the son did what he was instructed. He obeyed as life came um, pouring back in to his body. Can you imagine that mother's gratitude right. Right. as it just uncontrollable, just joy all of a yeah. sudden right. is replacing sorrow, which could not be comforted a moment before. Right. And now then, there's joy unspeakable. Yeah. Yeah. That is the evidence oh. of a life touched by intentional oh, yes. compassion. Oh, right. yeah. Amen. Yes. Just, oh my. And we could we could go on. I could talk about, you know, how that he also would reach out to those on the edges of um, society. He reached out to the tax collectors and the um, publicans yeah. who were understandably, they were despised and they were hated. But he went against the norm with intent. Zacchaeus? I know all of this crowd is around listening to what I'm saying to you, but I've been touched with compassion for you. And so I, with intention, I stopped right here to look up and say, Zacchaeus, come down from there, for I'm going to your house today. It was purposeful. Mm -hmm. It was intent. Right. And it was intentional. Amen. Amen. So we could um, we can talk about all of those things. Christ was motivated by one thing. Right. Compassion. Right. All right. Right. He saw everyone in their need. And then he calls out to us. And he tells Peter, write to my church. Mm -hmm. Write to my church and tell them, since we're approaching the end of all things, yes. be intentional. Amen. All right. yes. Amen. Be intentional yes. Yes. in your compassion right. as you display the compassion of Christ. Amen. 
and there is a call that is going out and he says be intentional so that you can be given to prayer Amen. let's talk about being intentional because um, we need to know what what does it really mean to be intentional you know we have our ideas yeah. mm -hmm. but I can tell you this being intentional it requires something on our part. Right. We can't just go through life. Hate Sarah, Sarah, whatever happens will happen. And I will just, you know, react to whatever happens today. That is not intentional living. It's not what God has called us to. Right. 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 Being, being intentional, truly being intentional, requires understanding that our attitudes, our feelings, our thoughts, and our actions, both conscious and unconscious, directly impact every single one of our experiences. Yes, amen. All right, okay. Intentional living involves taking responsibility. So ugh, here we go back to that self-control and self-mastery. If we're going to be intentional, yeah. we've got to go back and look at those things. Okay. But intentional living, it involves taking responsibility for our mental, our emotional, our spiritual, and our physical well-being. Mm -hmm. right. yes. And it also requires us freeing ourselves from self-limiting conditioning. All right. All right. Because we have been conditioned to limit ourselves yes. when it comes to intentional living. Come on. Right. But God is saying, yes, come on. Church, wake up. Right. Right. Wake up. Now, I totally believe and understand 
We're at the end of times. The rapture is getting ready to take place. Jesus Christ is coming back. I don't care what you have been taught. I don't care what you have been told that, um, that it's not in the word, that he's not coming. Jesus Christ is returning for his church. He is returning for a bride. And he is returning for everyone who will accept what he came to give them. But it is up to us to be Jesus. It is up to us to be intentional with compassion and with our living so that we can pray properly. This is maybe taking a little detour here for a minute, but really it's all in line with what we're talking about. The Lord woke me up yesterday. Echo my authority. Okay, I am willing to do that. But you tell me exactly how you want me to do it. When he has already spoken something in heaven and he begins to move on us in prayer and he begins to direct us to pray in a certain way, and about certain things. As we begin to voice and give voice to the prayer that he is directing us to pray, the prayer that is yeah. flowing through us, we are echoing his authority. It has already been spoken in heaven and then it flows out of us on, as an echo. Have you ever been somewhere? Where there's an echo and you say something and then you hear it off in the distance coming back to you? Right. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what happens. All right. He speaks it in heaven. Mm -hmm. Then he moves on us and we just echo it right back. All right. All right. And so here it goes. He speaks it. It flows yeah. through us. We echo it right back. And his authority, his dominion, his creative purpose is fulfilled because we are his echo. All right. All right. So when we are living intentionally, purposefully, self-controlled, then what we are actually doing is we are giving ourselves over in a way to prayer so that we can echo what heaven is speaking and what heaven is putting into practice. Intentional requires that we own what we say. Uh, it's easy to say some things. Yes. It's easy to say, oh, you know, God spoke and said he's going to. God said that um, he was, he was going to send us flocks. We've got to own what we say. If we're going to own it. We're going to act on it. Yes. All right. All right. Amen. Intentional living determines that we choose how we show up in all situations and how we contribute when we do show up. You see, if I am living intentionally for God, then I have to choose 
when I enter the sick room? How am I going to show up in this situation? And how am I going to contribute when I do? Now, I can either walk in and I can say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry you're feeling so bad. We'll be praying for you. Have a good one. Which we've all done way too many times to count. Sorry, Jesus. Or if I am living with intentional compassion, then if I determine how I'm going to show up in this situation, I'm going to show up in this situation. And I'm going to be touched with compassion. I'm going to be able to understand how they're feeling in this moment. I'm, I'm going to be able to understand their fears and their worries and their concerns. And so then, yes. how I contribute in yes. this situation, yes. if it is being guided by intentional compassion, yes. then I can't turn my back and walk away right. without bringing it to Jesus. Right. Right. And letting the compassion right. of Jesus reach right. out through my hand right. to touch the untouchable. Yes. All right. And understand and know when I extend my hand, I am extending the hand of Jesus Christ. And when the hand of Jesus Christ touched people yes. with compassion, their lives were forever changed. Right. Right. They were never the same ever again because of the touch of compassion of Christ. Being intentional requires that we refine our skills. I know that most of you think that I am a very um, outgoing extrovert, and I'm not. It is not easy on me to walk into a room of people even people I know. And just walk around and chat and have a conversation. And... Sure. But you see, I can refine that skill. All right. Because if I stay where Kim Wood would like to stay, All right. then I don't have to push myself. You come to me. I'm going to talk to you if you come to me. But you see, compassion for those that Jesus has compassion for requires of me that I refine a skill. He's not going to leave me to do it by myself. Right. But this is me being intentional. Right. All right. That's good. With compassion. And you have your own skills that you need to refine. Amen. Maybe. Maybe it's as simple as washing your dishes and getting them out of the sink. So that you can feel comfortable. 
to let someone step inside your house. I don't know what your what your skills are that you need to refine. You have to figure that out. Mm. But if we're going to be intentional in our living for Christ, then um, we have things like that. And um, being intentional is also learning to choose to respond versus react. Right. You see, Jesus always responded. Satan always reacts. Right. Okay. Okay. We can we can get into that lifestyle where sure. we're always reactionary. Yes. Sure. We're just always reacting to everything that happens. Come on now. Because we weren't intentional. So that we were ready and able to respond. Okay. Okay. Being intentional also, and this kind of goes back to what I was saying about refining skills for me, but um, being intentional requires that we expand both our thought and our comfort zones. Just interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We think that if we're going to do something intentionally, that that means I'm going to do it on purpose. But there's so much more involved with right. this yeah, okay. that God is actually saying to us. And while we're expanding our thought and our comfort zones, then we've got to consciously increase focus on the experience that we're intending to create. Okay. You see, it, it's not been easy for all of us to say, let me lay, can I just lay my hand on you? Can I just hold your hand here for a second? Can I just pray with you? Can I just pray for you? Because we've had this thought like in our mind, well, you know, you're like, what if it doesn't happen? Um, if this isn't my comfort zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call. I'm going to call the pastor and have him pray. Because that's his, that's his comfort zone. You know, he, he, that should be his comfort zone. Can I just tell you all something? Moses couldn't handle every single little thing about, oh, should I buy a new car or should I not? Sure. My furnace broke. <laughs> he couldn't handle all that. And it wasn't God's mind and love for him to handle all that. Right. right. But it was God's mind and God's will for it to be broken down. That's right. Mm -hmm. And for somebody else to be able to say, okay, I understand. You don't, you, um, this is, you know, this isn't really in your wheelhouse. You don't know a lot about cars. Let me talk to you. I know about cars. Let's talk about cars. Here's how you buy a car. Here's what you want to look at. Here's what you want to do. Let me explain this to you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that, that we're not in reach and we're not touchable. That's not what I'm saying. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is we also cannot be a church of 3,000 and pastor and I be the only people that are running around trying to pray for all the sick and right. run into the hospital right. and run into houses all over the community and right. run it in your office at your job to pray for the person that sits in the desk next to you. Right, right. Well, it's not my comfort zone. Uh -huh. It might not have been before. But seeing as to how we are at the end of all things, let us be intentional in our compassion, which requires that we expand our comfort zone. 
own. All right. That's Amen. good. Well said. Amen. And we focus on the experience that we're intending to create. Yes. Yes. So right. what, what am I saying with that? Yes. I'm saying if the experience of what is needed here is healing, yes. then that's what I'm going to be concentrating on. Yeah, all right. All right. If the need is salvation, right. then I am stepping. I've expanded my comfort zone, and I might not have ever thought I was a good altar worker before, but here I am. And this is the situation. So I'm going to step into this. And the experience that I want to create right here is for this person to repent and tell God that they're sorry for their sins. They might never, ever get a chance to repent again. So I've got to create this experience right now. I've got to be intentional about it. And if we're going to do all of these That's things right. and we're going to do them intentionally, yeah. then um, we have to go about it without defining how it has to look. All right. Yeah. All right. Amen. We've got to get that wiped out of our heads. That's right. We've done it absolutely for too long. Right. I remember one time that um, we, we had a lady that received um, the, well, she had come and she had repented. And her her life had led her in such a way that, um, that when she came and she repented and God forgave her, it was such a joyous, beautiful experience for her. And she felt so wonderful in that moment. And so as God continued to lead her and um, she came along and she was asking God to fill her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. Oh, she would just come and she would just pray and she would pray and God would move all over her and the power of God would be all over her. And, and um, she would even speak with tongues and she'd get up and say, I don't know what's wrong with me and why I can't get the Holy Ghost. This was years ago on Walnut Street. And um, finally... We, we sat down with her. I, I had been teaching her a Bible study. And, and I just I said, can you, can you just talk to me about this? Can you, can you talk me through what happens when, when you go to the altar and when you pray? And she began to relate to me. Well, when I, when I first came to God and, and when I repented and you know how I was living and you know what I was involved in at that time and, and I felt so clean and I, and I felt so wonderful. And so she had it in her head that in order to receive the Holy Ghost that it had to look, it had to feel a certain way. It had to feel exactly like repentance felt. And once that she was able to understand, we come to God and when that we come to God, we can't define exactly how he's going to make it feel, how he's going to make it look. Right. Once she had that understanding, that was a beautiful experience of repentance. Mm -hmm. That was forgiveness. But the Holy Ghost is a totally different experience. Right. So it's going to feel totally different. Right. She came in the next service, just lifted up both hands into the air, and the um, Lord filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and her face took on a glow, and she began to um, dance and sway in the spirit, and she was so thrilled and so excited. All right. And she turns around. I got it! I got it! I got it! How do you know? I felt the Holy Ghost, and it feels different than repentance. All right, all right. Well, you know, that's the same thing with 
with us. If we're going to live intentionally, for too long, we have had this ideology in our head of how it has to look. Right. Sure. Right. Yes. If Pastor had been in the church long enough to get the has to look like this, maybe the World War One veteran would have never been baptized in Jesus' name. Right. Yeah. But he went to the man with compassion and intent, living intentionally and ready to focus, expand. He's expanding his comfort zone and he's going forward. And he has no idea in his head of how it has to look, how it has to be. He didn't feel like all the circumstances must be aligned perfectly. Mm -hmm. Every star must be in a straight line and the sun brilliantly shining at the top in order for this to happen. But that's how we've been living. That's true. But the Lord is telling us tonight, I walked on earth and I operated out of compassion and I was intentional in my living. And now I am calling you as a church to be intentional in your living. Being intentional is simple, but it is rarely easy and so what we have to do is we have to ask our ask ourselves the question is it worth it is it is it worth it you know um living intentionally is not a matter of setting a goal or a resolution those those Setting resolutions very um, often, they rarely bring about a sustainable change. And why? Well, it's because we're trying to force circumstances to line up according to our goals. Right. Or we're trying to force ourselves to live according to um, a resolution that we have made. And um, Dr. David Hawkins wrote a book about power versus force, and he says, because force automatically creates counterforce, its effect is limited by definition. So when we think, okay, I'm going to be intentional about this. I'm setting a resolution. Then we start trying to force it to happen. Then we're trying to force it, and there is a counter force that comes back against it. And it is, um, its effect is limited. But you see, the difference is we're not talking about setting goals and making resolutions. Now, I think you ought to have some goals. You ought to, you know, be trying to advance toward your goals of whatever, you know. Gonna, I'm going to sprinkle my house in the um, month of April, and so I'm going to break it down week by week, and then I'm going to do these rooms and these. I'm gonna stop. You know, that's a good, that's a good goal. That's, that's okay. But that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about intentional living for Jesus Christ. All right. Okay. We're talking about all of these other things. Um, You know, usually when we make resolutions, it's from a position of lack. If If you actually sit back and you think about that, what it is is that we are wanting to be something or somewhere that we aren't. We're not, we're not so much trying to be something okay. as we are trying to not be something. All right. 
Take it from a dieting perspective. We are trying to not be the weight we are. Instead of we are trying to be. Okay. If you if you look at it like that, we we can't focus on two opposing thoughts at the same time. So this means we're either going to be focused on what we want or what we don't want. Okay. And things always unfold in the direction of our focus. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. So you say, you know, I mean, I'm a sister with now. This is um, all of a sudden you kind of like went off somewhere. Well, no, I'm trying to talk to you about something. Resolutions stem from human level self, our intellect or our emotions. Okay. That's resolutions. Uh -huh. But intention comes from our essential nature, which accesses, this is from a scientific source, which accesses an energy source beyond our physical selves. All right. So let me just kind of rephrase it. In other words, intention comes from our inner man accessing the one who created us in the beginning. All right. Amen. Praise God. All right. Uh -huh. Right. We have to, um, there has to be an awareness. Intention brings about an awareness. And so it carries with it dynamic, creative power and inspiration. Intentional living stems from our inner yearnings, not from external input. All right. Again, back to science. But what is science doing here? It's proving out what God is saying to us. Mm -hmm. That if we will be aware, he's placing within us some internal yearnings. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Anybody longing to see a soul saved? All right. Amen. Amen. Anybody walked around your house saying, oh, God, I want you to save someone through me this year. Let me be the All tool. Right. Let All me right. be the instrument. Amen. That's an internal yearning. That what that internal yearning does, if I am being intentional, that internal yearning is going to carry with it a dynamic, creative power. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where does that dynamic, creative power come from? It comes from Acts chapter 1. Yes. And ye right. shall receive yes. power. Right. Yes. After that, yes. the yes. Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. Yes. When that we are setting an intention, then we need to focus on the what without being attached to the how. Right. Okay. That's All right. good. All right. All right. Amen. If I'm going to live intentionally, I am going to be focused on what yeah. Jesus is trying to do. Right. I'm yes. going to be focused on yes. the compassion. Biblically, living intentionally means to pursue the life that God has called us to live. Yes. Intentionality requires deliberate action. God is intentional. And he calls us to be the same. All right. okay. We have to daily choose to pursue with intent, our daily purpose. The worldview of intentional living is work hard, create the life you want, make all the lists, 
buy all the planners, land the perfect job, and that leaves you burned out and burdened. But God's version of intentional living involves making a daily choice to glorify God through our lives. Amen. His version of intentionality gives purpose and direction and it cuts out the need for striving. I want to give you one one more scripture and then we will be wrapping up for tonight. If I can find it in my Bible. Alright, here we go. Galatians 5 and 25. It reads, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Amen. All right. And that is intentional living right. in a nutshell. Right. All right. Right. Yes. Amen. Jesus, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for talking to us. I thank you for the word of God. Jesus, when we look and we understand the compassion that brought you from your very throne of glory to earth below, that caused you to be hung on a cross and buried in a grave to rise again. If we really, truly could wrap our minds around the compassion of Christ that has been extended to us, then God There is nothing that would hold us back from crying out to you from a world that is so much like yours was. We live in a compassionless society. It seems like so much more right now, God, that people are just all about themselves to the destruction and the tearing down of everyone around them that doesn't align themselves. But God, you stepped in to the midst of a convoluted world And you just begin to shine out and demonstrate and live a lifestyle that demonstrated the compassion that was on the inside of you. And so I ask you that as we are your workmanship, would you work your compassion through us? to the world that is around us. I ask you that tonight, God, that we would never, ever again be able to look at the word intentional in the same way ever again. But I ask you that you would help us to become focused, and intentional in our everyday living for you so that we can break the norms of society and be touched 
with compassion and that it can lead us to pray as we have never prayed before echoing and releasing your voice into every situation that we come in contact with. I ask it tonight in the lovely name of Jesus Christ.